Eagle. Up the Premier League we go. <laughs> Spurs are f***ing shit. Abosh. Welcome back to the Irish Mags Show, your weekly Newcastle United podcast brought to you by the Irish Mags and UFC supporters group. My name is Paul and I will be your host for today. And this week, you are blessed with the company of just myself and Mr. Alan Williamson of Irish Mags Chief Community Correspondent fame. How are you doing there, Alan? It's just the two of us. I'm not too bad. I've successfully recovered from that unbelievable performance the weekend. So how are you? I'm pretty much in a similar vein now. I, what a weekend it was, and we will obviously come to it. Obviously, we're missing somebody this week. Mm. Um, we've decided that, you know, in order to appear on the Irish Mags show with a particular level of authenticity and, and knowledge, you've, you know, we, we've set a kind of series of rigorous tests and challenges uh, for our co-hosts to prove their NUFC expertise. It's no surprise, though, that Chris failed every single one of them. <laughs> so he's now locked up in a bunker somewhere on his holidays in Morocco, studying away to prepare for the repeat exam in the summer. And uh, we wish him all the best with his studies. Although, to be fair, Alan, I think we only got Chris on the show because he won that that competition we ran. Was yeah. it like collect 10 Tato bags and be on yeah. a podcast or something? He, he yeah. definitely cheated somehow. I don't know how he done this. Yeah. <laughs> it kind of sounds like Chris Show, right? In fairness. Yeah. Um, but yeah, can you believe as well, Alan, even though Chris is missing, it's episode 20 of the Irish Mags show. No, I, I 20. Did, did catch me by surprise when I seen that earlier. I was like, Jesus, we're, we must be world famous by now, are we? <laughs> I'm just kind of happy we haven't been cancelled yet yeah. <laughs> <laughs> after 20 <laughs> episodes. Yeah. Um, however, we got there. But yeah, 20 episodes in uh, and it's been a blast so far. So yeah, I, just absolutely. again, one big last shout out. All our listeners who've been tuning in so far, who've been here since the beginning, who've come up along the way and who will be listening, obviously, going forward. We've had great comments in the YouTube uh, chat. We've had loads of really good reviews on all of the podcast platforms. And as long as you keep listening, we're going to keep doing it. But that doesn't mean you should stop listening. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> we can't be stopped. Right. Just before we start, um, I thought it might be pertinent to, to just mention something, particularly kind of on behalf or of the Irish Mags group, I guess, and something that's relevant to ourselves as Irish Newcastle United fans. And it was the sad news that Joe Kinnear um, passed away since probably we kind of last recorded. Mm. So I suppose just from ourselves, it's obviously he's he's managed Newcastle from 2008 to 2009. He was director of football for a year, a couple of seasons later. Got a lot of different critics and, and I suppose at certain times a bit of mockery for different things within the Newcastle United community. But ultimately, an absolute football man did crazy, wonderful things at Wimbledon back in the day as well, which you'll all remember. Um, and of course, pertinent to ourselves, he made 26 caps for the Republic of Ireland national yep. team from 1967 to 1975. So, yeah, on behalf of all of us, um, sympathies to all his family and extended friends. And uh, yeah, R.A.P. Joe Kinnear, very sad, um, but a, a great indeed. football man, as everyone has said. Right, moving on, Alan, just the two of us. We are unsupervised. We have a free reign at this show. So we're, of course, going to be reviewing the events at the weekend, folks, because as we know, what a weekend it was. We had one of our best results of the season so far. So we're going to be diving straight into that because it was a momentous, monumental weekend for Newcastle United. Once again, against Spurs, they hate coming to St. James's Park and I love it. And I'm here for all oh, yes. of this. Um, we will, of course, be taking a look at some of the antics that our traveling Irish mags got up to because we saw we had good numbers again traveling over for that game. Not jealous at all of mm. the guys and gals uh, who made it over for that particular fixture. And um, we'll also we'll also have a little chat, Alan, about what went on down in HQ in the bleaker <laughs> as well, because no doubt you were there in attendance. There's, as always. 
what did they say, Alan? Death, taxes, and Alan in the bleaker for Newcastle it's game, isn't it? Exactly it. <laughs> Excellent. And, folks, a bit of a unique segment this week because it's just myself and Alan. And some of you may know this. We are we have a particular fondness for a game called Football Manager. And because we're very much enthusiastic of that game, we talk about it a lot before and after we record the show, we're actually going to do a little bit of a segment using Football Manager to peek into the future of what the next five years, the next five seasons might actually have in store for Newcastle United, according to the Football Manager engine. So we're basically simulating the next five seasons after this one. And we're actually going to have a look through how the club has progressed within the football manager world to give us a flavor of how things may hopefully or not hopefully go (laughs) over the next five years. Uh, We'll be taking a look at what kind of transfers the club made in that time, manager movements, if there are any, eyes emoji. And of course, have we won any trophies and or have we won the league in that five seasons, which would be mad to think it could happen. Mm. But in football manager, anything can happen we've not really looked at it yet either so no. we there's, there's a good chance we might be as shocked as anyone live <laughs> on the show this week and then finally we'll have a little look ahead to the crystal palace game which you know on the day of recording is still just over maybe a week maybe nine days away yeah which is a nice break for the players for the managers and for us um but this particular fixture alan carries a bit more importance and yes This is a development that's kind of built up in the last kind of week um, with the breaking news that I myself am planning to travel up to Dublin to the Bleaker for the actual meetup for the Palace game. We have decided with no preparation, no organization and no idea how it's going to go to hold the first ever live in person Irish Mags show on site in the Bleaker before the Crystal Palace game, probably kicking off from around six and I think what we'd really like to do is obviously have some of our Irish mags who are coming down pop in a bit early. We'll get a pint in, of course. I'm not, I'm not going to promise I won't have had a few pints by the time we hit <laughs> six o'clock. And uh, what we'd love to do is get some of our Irish mags actually on the show, get a few questions, get some discussions. And uh, obviously then hopefully go and pick up another three points against Crystal Palace. Easy peasy, Alan, yeah? Oh, yeah, sure. What could go right? <laughs> yeah, like we should probably tell Chris Show that he's in charge of all the logistics and all the technology and all the setup, no? Uh, but maybe we'll save that for when he gets back from his lovely holidays in Morocco. Alan, let's talk about the weekend. And as soon as you and I arrived on this call, before we hit the big red button to record, you had a big smile on your face. I had a big oh, yes. smile on my face. It wasn't because we saw each other. It was, of course, because we're still carrying the elation that was the 4-0 demolition of Spurs, who, as we said, are starting to build a bit of a bad record when they're traveling Mm -hmm. up to Newcastle. And we are all for it. I was at the game that was the 6-1 result last season. um, And I'm just, I can't believe that we've gone and basically done it again. It probably should have been 8-0 this time around. We actually could have been even more. Um, So we'll dive into the game in a minute. But before we do... Let's take a look through what our Irish Mags members were up to before, during, and after the game. And I guess the first place to start, as we said, Alan, is in Irish Mags HQ above HQ. in the bleaker. Talk so us we had a serious turnout for an early game on a Saturday. I think we had 27 people in for us, including two Spurs fans who were just oh. happened to be part. Yeah. And the funny thing is, they just happened to be part run by, heard the sound of it coming through the TV and we're like oh the match is on let's go in and watch it and realised they'd mm. walked into a Newcastle bar and Love then we it. had <laughs> then we had another guy from Newcastle who was over for work was in a hotel in Smithfield and was like where can I watch the match what's the nearest pub to me and it brought him to Bleaker Street he rocked in and seen all the Newcastle jerseys and he's like I, I, I think I might have taken a wrong turn <laughs> he was absolutely delighted but yeah we had a great meet up I think like between families friends sons mm. and daughters coming in we had a great gang of people that showed up and everyone enjoyed themselves bar the two Spurs fans of course because what a result what a game and what a meet up I mean, there's real two conflicts of emotion there. You have your man who you said was a Newcastle fan, right? And he was the lad who was working and he's just mm. gone, maybe there'll be a couple of people watching the game and he's walked into a bar with 27 <laughs> you know, odd Newcastle fans in there. I can imagine that. And then 
the poor kind of uh, disheartened fellows that walk in from the Spurs side of yeah. things and just see a float of black and white. Yeah. But equally, delighted for them. And uh, we hope to have more of that in the future, for sure. It was great. Class. Uh, the photo looks brilliant, by the way. I don't know what Sean Bowes is up to. He, he's, he looks like he's a bit confused. He's like, am I holding the flag the right way up? He, uh, uh, that, that kind of, he never knows what's going on, does yeah. he? The less said about Sean, the better. Like, let's just leave okay, it at that. Fair. <laughs> wise, wor- wise words there from his godfather. Um, <laughs> moving over to the actual game itself. Um, yeah. We saw, like, as a group, obviously probably would have liked to see more tickets and more lads traveling mm-hmm. but we did see quite a good gang a uh, good cohort traveling over who did who were lucky enough to get tickets and lucky being the key word in that sentence mm-hmm. i don't know how many times i saw in the whatsapp groups you lucky lads and you know i'm not i'm, I'm removing the foul language here but yes. you you lucky lads who got to experience that because what a game it was oh, and as usual alan it starts in rosies <laughs> Well, naturally, any time any of us are over, the question's always asked, where do we meet you? And it's Rosie's from half mm. six in the morning. Whenever that place opens, you'll find an Irish mag jumper in there somewhere. So the first picture you'll see is Tev and Daniel and the lads, and obviously with the local resident that is Piper from Rosie's, mm. who is local celebrity now. If you don't know him, there's something going on. So Yeah. He, but, do you know what? He probably has Chrisho's gloves. <laughs> he definitely does. That's exactly where they are. <laughs> We've cracked the case. Only It only took us 20 episodes, but we've cracked the case. <laughs> Brilliant. And then moving on, like you've got Tev's photo. Like, I'm convinced Tev is scamming the club because the mm. seats that that man constantly gets. He, uh, I'm convinced one of these days he's going to send a selfie he's sitting beside Eddie Howe on the bench. And it's these are my seats. I'm like, and it's quite going on. Eddie. Just... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He does well in fairness. He does well. Um, But like we've seen it in the last few weeks, to be fair, you know, we we don't want to be throwing Tev, you know, out out to the wolves (laughs) saying Tev knows people. Um, But we've had really good luck in terms of getting tickets, but also getting really, really good like pitch side seats, you know, center of the halfway line in the Milburn and so on. Obviously, that then the other extreme of that is some of the poor chaps that have had to climb the you know, 19,000 yeah. steps up the top of the Leases or the Gallow Gate. A level seven, um, yeah. No, but either way, you're in the stadium and th- yeah, for those care. of us that aren't there, who cares indeed? That's it. And moving on, you've got the lads outside Sinners and I can only assume that that's the most suitable photo that we have from this little cohort heading to Sinners because <laughs> I'm never allowed in there when I'm walking by there. The better half never lets me go in. <laughs> <laughs> is it because it's called sinners and she thinks it's more, just something it's just thinks it's something else more than likely i don't blame yeah. her to be fair <laughs> yeah it's only fair the one thing i like about that place is there's a big old sign on match day out there uh that basically just says no away fans mm. do you want to maybe we need to get one of them in the bleaker or yeah <laughs> or quite I, the opposite because we like i always think it's funny when we have a, an away fan in especially when we win like it's not funny yeah. when we lose but when we win it's brilliant <laughs> as newcastle fans alan we don't get to gloat as often as we'd no. like so yeah, you just need one, and and we're all it over. It. That's it. Um, then moving on, we've. A, I don't know who sent this picture in, but it's a view of the subs getting ready, and you can just see how close some of the people are sitting. It's, you can literally see what Lewis Hall had for his lunch. It's mental how close he is there. Um, that is pretty cool. Yeah, moving on. Then we have GB's view of the war flag display, which I have to say oh. I what what a display it's just a little represent them. that's all you need to say about it war flags knocked it out of the park as usual i don't think they've ever done anything wrong with any I mean, other I saw, displays I saw, I saw that display going up and i was going to come to it in a moment but i suppose you have you had the display of all of the local northeast players mm-hmm. or the guys who've grown up supporting newcastle and simultaneously in the stadium, they also had that. Well, obviously, Sela had that initiative with the RNID, which is the it's the institute, the National Institute for the, the Deaf in, in the UK, mm. um, where they were testing out those new kits that actually have those kind of sensory things installed, so they can feel the atmosphere of the stadium. What a what a Saturday to choose yeah, to game. actually do yeah. that, um, and obviously all the clips. But like, just that was going on in one corner, and the camera was flicking to that, and obviously then the war flags is unveiled with all the local lads. Uh, it's, that's just what a special day, I guess, um, yeah. for everyone that was involved there. Like all the fans, but obviously 
people people from the northeast and those um those group that were from the RNID, which is class. It's cracking. Fair play indeed. We'll have to get a request in, Alan, that at some point we need to see a war flags TIFO of all the Irish players <laughs> that have featured. And that. we've obviously done up our own graphics before. Mm-hmm. Um we did it for Paddy's Day, I think, didn't we? Yes, we did. And we did. um I'd love to see one of them with Che Given. Damien Duff, Andy O'Brien, Leon Best, uh, Chris O, you know, Jeff Hendrick, the works. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. And then moving on, we have some of the fancier lads. So we, Kieran Fergus had, now these were Christmas presents, I've been told. Don't believe him now, but he says that they were Christmas presents. I just think mm. they're both loaded. They went to the yeah. barracks and had a lovely meal while watching the match. And they managed to meet Tino Liveramento and Sean Longstaff and a few other famous faces they didn't get photos with but the lads said they had an unbelievable time and they would highly recommend heading to the barracks if you're looking if you can afford to look at going yeah. to one of the matches there because they are quite tasty unfortunately and it's one then, of those kind of you know mm, if you can do it once in a lifetime yeah kind of things, oh yeah 100 percent. um it looks class yeah and then the l- second last part we have here is keen oc in the group who had an mm. absolutely unbelievable view of the war flags display. I, I think he's in the Milburn 1892 bar because it looks like where I've sat before, but that is some view of that display. It's unbelievable. Mm. Mm. And then moving on, one of our committee members... I don't know whether it's famous or infamy now at this stage, managed uh, to get himself hooked onto the match cam, holding up our massive flag as well. So, Colin, fair play to you. You got your, you got your mush on the telly. Can't argue with that. But again, is he, uh, is he like, is he kind of hidden there somewhere? It's oh, kind of hard to He is hidden to behind that, that flag, <laughs> but he is there. And if you watch the match cam, 12 minutes mm. and 35 seconds, I believe it is, you will see the man, the myth, the legend that is Colin. And all his uh, last man standing winnings that he's managed to pay for tickets out of. That's class. I mean, you know, we always talk about because obviously we bring all the flags. The flags always mm. travel over. So whoever's going, someone is going to have a flag going mm. over. And uh, we, you know, you want to see them on TV. You want to see them on the screen. You want to get these photos. I, I do have a question about some of the flags. You know, I, I see these flags like the fellas that were holding it um, outside Sinners there. We've seen the flag go through Rosie's, go through all the different bars and places. Are they washable? Um, they are. Do they, you know, do they do they survive all of these uh, they, weekends? And they always survive. They always get washed. Um, my better half does all that for us. So wow. Yes. So I actually am the one that's in control of all the flags all the time, and I divvy them out. I went on my holidays mm. last season and came back to a couple of the flags destroyed, and I was very unhappy. Not like me to be unhappy, you know yourself. So I mm. decided to put my foot down and say, these are now mine. I will look after them. If you take them and you destroy them, you have to pay for it. It's fair as fair. So, But any of the lads who ever want a flag going to the game, all you have to do is ask. They're they're not mine. I look after they're them ours. for the Irish mags. They're, they're everybody's. They're not mine. They're mm. the Irish mags. I just happen to be the one that looks at Well, I don't clean them. The better half does. <laughs> Yeah, but like as you said, these are these are property of the Irish Mags, and they yes. come in through the flag fund, which we know loads of people have donated to, uh, and we're constantly, you know, anything we're raising through all the last man standing uh, initiatives. Again, shout out to Colin. Um, it's all going into the flag fund. We get more yeah. flags, bigger, better, uh, better designs, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, shout out, Alan, if you're traveling and want a flag, but at your own risk. If you damage <laughs> it, he'll be coming for you. Absolutely. Now. Alan, shall we talk about the game? Uh, I, th- I think we should. Small bit. I think I think we'll have to now. It's when that when that eleven got announced. I mean, even coming into the game the week before, do you know Tottenham? They're a little bit up and down of late, yeah. but I, as I kind of looked at it, I realised they're nearly pretty much at full strength, mm-hmm. right? This is Andrews, a really really good manager. Obviously, you've got the likes of Son and Madison. Kulisevsky is not even starting for them there, which is crazy. Brendan Johnson, like the options they have, the depth they have. And then I flipped over to us, Alan, and I, I'm actually going to throw this at you now. Obviously, hindsight is a wonderful thing. Mm. But if I was to say to you, we're going to put two teams out against each other today. On one side, you have 
the team that started against Spurs, Dubravka. We had, um, I'll have to remember them all, Dan Byrne, Emil Kraft, Fabian Scher. Uh, uh, we had Murphy. Jacob Murphy at right back, because that's a thing. Uh, Longstaff in the middle alongside um, Bruno and Elliot Anderson had a cracking game. We'll come to that. Mm. And then the front three we all wanted to see, obviously, was yeah. Isaac, Barnes and Gordon. Now, if I was to say, Alan, you're in charge of that team. And I'm going to take you on with this team. And I would say to you, I've got Nick Pope and goals, <laughs> Kieran Trippier right back, Matt Target left back, Lascelles and Botman in the centre half. In the middle, I've got Miley, I've got Joe Willock, and I've got Sandro Tonali. On the right, I'll put Mickey Almiron out there. On the left, do you know what? Let's put Joel Linton out there. And up front, I'm going to put Callum Wilson up there. <laughs> now, I, the one question is, who's going to win between our two teams? But equally... How would the second team get on against Spurs and yeah. or in the league, in the Champions League? It's crazy. I would love to see that match play out. <laughs> that would yeah. be a serious well, we do match. Have, we do have football manager, but we haven't prepared. <laughs> <laughs> no, when, when, when the team got announced on Saturday morning, I'm not going to lie. I was on the dart on the way in and I was like, oh God, this is... And I just kept seeing San, Kulazewski, Johnson, and I'm going... That back line is going to be torn to shreds. Yeah. I was not confident going into the game, but oh my God, what a performance. Man to man, Spurs didn't show up. It was weird. Like, it, like plenty of the ball, did absolutely nothing with it, but mm. I just could not get over how poor they were man to man against arguably mostly second choice Newcastle side. Couldn't get over yeah, it. Yeah, yeah second and third and I think it's yeah. like it wasn't even it wasn't that I was even trying to predict how we'll do against Spurs I was trying to predict how we're actually going to line out and I got it yeah. wrong like twice because <laughs> I, I was looking at it and I was like is Kraft going to go left back because he, he mm. didn't really kind of shower himself in glory when he came on at centre back a little while ago Um, you know I was thinking okay Brendan Johnson on the right he's super quick definitely quicker mm. than Dan Burns so that's why I was thinking maybe it's Kraft then Murphy in the right back, I was I was a bit all over the place. Mm. And even Eddie Howe's pre-match interview, he he didn't even want to tell them. Yeah. Uh, I think it was Rio. Rio was there um, on the sideline, and he he basically said, "Yeah, we've picked a versatile team to be able to adapt in game." And it was so fluid in terms of yeah. the evolution of that. You know, when they had the ball coming up against us, players were moving around, picking up mm. different. Obviously, as we said, they were going man to man a lot. Um, but you know, we would advanced then with with kind of you know a standard back four even a back three and then it, it was just changing throughout the game well, wow. even before the game in the warm-up before the game there was a back four warming up together the back four didn't play eddie Howe. this yes because J- <laughs> jacob murphy was was playing left back in that warm-up yeah. i think as well yeah so <laughs> he eddie is beyond it when it comes to trying to get like pulling fast ones over teams so mm. Pasta Coglu had to be looking at that going right they're gonna go 4 3 3 bog standard the usual what they go with we came out with like a, a hybrid 3 4 3 5 4 5 2 3 kind of formation Mad. we we roasted them man to man they didn't get near us like they had plenty of the ball and did nothing with it they had 11 shots we'd 16 they had 70 odd percent possession yeah they, Poor performance by them. It was poor by them, but we completely rattled them. Do you know? Like, oh, yeah. yeah. They had, a, I think, the one or two early chances with Timo Werner, who who did what Timo Werner has done, particularly in the Premier League, whether it was yeah. Chelsea or, or even with Spurs, just doesn't really convert chances. But aside from that, it just, one, once we kind of just got past that little period mm-hmm. where Spurs were, you know, a bit excited, it was all Newcastle. And, and as we said, like, I've criticised Eddie Howe in the past um, mm. about, you know, only having a plan A, as most people have. But to see the tactical evolution there and the tactical masterclass mm. against, you know, Ange, who, I mean, I'm not going to say he's a tactical genius, but he has he has had that Spurs team playing a way that that Spurs team hasn't played for years. Absolutely. Yeah. I was mind blown by, you know, it, it, it became a case that the back four didn't matter. Mm. It, you know, the concerns we had because we just, weren't they weren't really threatened oh, um we let spurs have the ball i think it was 25 percent possession that we had yeah. but we had something like as you said all the 16 17 shots and 14 15 corners yeah it was insane and it was just the tenacity the attitude was completely different we the hunger was there and i suppose that's nothing more personified i think it was for the um 
the first goal where Anthony Gordon just simply wanted it more than Udogi. Yeah, than, and, and Udogi's not a he's not a small or weak fella. He's stocky, no. he's quick, he's athletic. And he just just shrugs him off, takes the ball off and gives it to Isaac. What a finish. Yeah, the the drop of the shoulder to send Van de Ven to the shops was outstanding. <laughs> no, don't wrong. Van de Ven was coming at a hundred miles an hour. He tried to mm. plant his feet, his feet went from under. It happens to everyone. It just happened to happen the exact moment that Isaac dropped yeah. his shoulder, but he got turned inside out. The one player who extremely disappointed me though in this whole game for Spurs was Hyung Min Son. He was, yeah, he wasn't even in the he game. He had an absolute disaster class, he did. Mm. Gave the ball away He's twice. Yeah, he taken off. <clears throat> Gave the ball away twice. We scored from one of them. I think we might have even scored from the second one as well. I think the third goal, he lost the ball. It was flicked into Isaac and it was 3-0. Mm. And then he was hooked off after that. He's one player who I hate when Newcastle play against because he yeah. constantly scores. But that was when he was a left winger. That man is wasted up top. He is fantastic fantastic footballer cannot play with his back to goal mm. people say scoring goals is an easy thing it's it's not playing up front is a difficult job and if you haven't done it properly it's tough so it's not fair on him especially when you're playing Werner who is technically a striker out on the wing as well doesn't make a whole yeah. heap of sense but just he, but what he was one who disappointed it's... And they're just not playing to Son's strengths no. there, right? By by having to play Werner out there, and maybe for Char if for Charleston was in the squad, mm. then you know you might see a bit more of Son. It's like you would say, you, you know, I think that number nine almost gets sacrificed in that system to connect the play. Mm. They they definitely would love like a Bobby Firmino in there because that was yeah. just his breakfast, lunch, and dinner out when he yeah. was at Liverpool. Um, back on Newcastle though, <sighs> Alan, I have to talk about Bruno first of all. Can we just get a collective? Irish mags, sigh of relief and round of applause for Bruno. <laughs> yes. Who managed to pick up nine yellow cards in his first 20 games and hasn't Ooh. picked up one since in the last, what, 10 ish games? 12, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, Eddie Howe was asked about it, and Eddie basically said, you know, he raised it with Bruno, and Bruno's like, boss, I promise I'm not going to get booked. And Eddie Howe was like, he had the fucking notion. Yeah. And <laughs> no. he's kind of like, it's, it's, you know, it sounds like a small thing, but like, in a squad as stretched as ours, particularly in midfield, like Massive. without Bruno there the last two months, we would have been in big trouble, even for one or two games, and he was close yeah. to a two-game suspension. Yeah. So fair play to him. And uh, his passing in this game, like it wasn't his like most productive game or he wasn't running the show like he normally mm. does because there was a lot more going on. But he did two long passes. The mm. one for, um, obviously the one for Isaac's second, where like... Bruno barely has the ball. Isaac knows to make the yeah. run because he knows what's coming. And Bruno just has this, like, even when the ball is quite close to his feet, yeah. he has this ability to kind of, like, just invert his body to, to yeah. get under the, you know, and he, and he just has so much strength in his right foot to be able to lamp it, it forward. Anyone else would need a big giant run up to, to boot the ball. It looked like the most uncomfortable pass to, that someone yeah. had ever made. I was like, how did he kick it that far with the ball? It was mm. underneath his body, basically. And he still lumped yeah. at 70. And people were like, oh, he just booted it. He didn't. He passed that ball into space for Isaac to run onto it. It was a cracking, cracking ball. But it was. Uh, and it was his ball run. that went into um, Anthony Gordon for yeah. that Udogi kind of 50-50. Gordon is going to get a lot of credit, but the ball hmm. actually landed Smashing. in onto like the side of um, Anthony Gordon's heel. Like he, he tries to trap it, but it's kind of yeah. the outside of his feet. Oh. So I just, I, I live for a long pass. I used to love watching um, John Joe Shelby was great at it. Uh, like even Michael Carrick was brilliant at it back in the day. I know he's not a Newcastle player, obviously. Newcastle lad. Um, so I, I could watch that all day. Um, and just to go back, I mean, look, Gordon was unbelievable. Like, mm. what did he have? Goal, two assists. I had him in my, F my, my FPL team along with Isaac. I hope you did too. Um, Always. He was unbelievable. Player of the season so far. Has to go to the Absolutely. Euros. Has to be close to starting at the Euros. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I know they're looking at Cole Palmer here and there. Rashford's not even worth discussing anymore. No. But like, how could you not be... If you're Southgate, how could you not be saying, I, I, I need to start him because yeah. defenders cannot handle him. And, and nobody has yet. And he's scored against all the big clubs. He's scored yeah. against all the big teams this season. So no questions there. But just to finish up, Alan, on Isaac. Like there, there is, there's these talks of he he misses easy chances, but 
and and, and me, me, maybe there's a bit of couple of a, a bit of rustiness here and there, or mm. you know, quick the quickness in the box suddenly it's there and you and he doesn't convert it. But give that man the ball on a one on one, or even a two or three on one, because yeah. we've seen him leaving yeah. defenses for dust. Unbelievable! Like what? I don't know even know what else to say about him. No, uh, I I told you I was going to say something today that was not a oh. bad take if you know what I mean. But I'm going to mm. say something about Isaac. If not, if when he's still with us in four or five years' time, he might not have outscored Shearer, but I think we will be saying that he is a better centre forward for Newcastle United than Alan Shearer ever was. I cannot get over oh. how good this man is. He he can set goals up. He can score goals. He can, he can do it all. He is the second best striker in the Premier League at the minute. Ollie Watkins is close to him. Mm, but I mm. think Isaac does things that Watkins can't do. Watkins might have outscored him at the minute. Isaac's missed 10 or 11 games this season. He's only got one goal he less. Has, yeah. He has only played 24. Four, I think it's twenty four, yeah. twenty six games, something like that. Of the thirty, seventeen of goals. Yeah, I know a couple of penalties are, are in there, and to to Watkins' credit, I don't think he scored a penalty this season. I think all of his Doesn't goals went from open play. But um, goals per minute or goals per game, Isaac yeah. is top of both those lists. Um, I even Wonder tweeted you. out a stat, not a stat, but like a possibility. I was kind of looking at the mathematics of it all, and basically, Isaac has played twenty four games. It doesn't mean he's played. 90 minutes mm. in all 24 of those games. We know he hasn't. But he has scored 17 goals in 24 games. Now, if he plays every minute of the next six games, we have six games left, mm. that would mean he would have featured in 30 games. And if he does finish top scorer, Alan, obviously there's a big if there, but Haaland only scored one against Luton, so that's a mm. good sign. If Izak was to somehow finish top scorer in the league, which would be mental if it happens, yeah. he would have done so with the fewest amount of games played on paper since Harry Kane in 2017 because Harry Kane finished top scorer with 30 games played and in the least amount of minutes played assuming he plays every minute from now until the end of the season since Dimitar Berbatov in 2011 he played something like 2200 minutes I think Izak would make 2300 minutes if again if he plays 90 minutes Uh, never mind the fact that we've got 10 minutes extra injury time for every (laughs) single game we play um so what what it shows you is like if you boil it down to minutes and time on the pitch because ultimately you know you can say about number of games played and mm. goal score but if you're looking at minutes on the pitch goals per minute he's it's phenomenal his actual record mm. where it is for a player that what what percentage of the season would you say when he's played on the pitch what percentage of fitness has he been on average he... I yeah I think the last two weeks is finally he's gotten past the eighty percent mm. mark I still don't think he's a hundred percent fit which is terrifying to say. I still think yeah. he has another gear to get into. Uh, he's only going to get better. And for anyone who thinks he's going anywhere, we signed him for 63 million. We minimum, minimum have to double that plus 30. Absolutely. So 150 million is the bare minimum that that man can leave for. And that is only if he's off the of PSG. If Arsenal come knocking, I want 200 million. I don't care. Ruin football. Destroy <laughs> football to keep that man at the club. <laughs> That's the way yes. I'm looking at it. And just one no, final note on that attacking lineup that we had starting the game, Barnes, Isaac, Gordon. Mm. They've played 136 minutes of football together. Eight goals right. have gone in. Yes. So we've scored eight goals and not conceded while those three have been on the pitch together. Oh. So, <laughs> yeah. I like, I like this. I like this a lot. Yes. If, like, I, come here. If me auntie had wheels, she'd be a bike and all that jazz. But if we had a full strength team for this entire season, I don't think it's beyond the realms of possibility that we would have been challenging for the Champions League again. Like it's, yeah, we're not too far off at all at the, at the minute. No, I hundred percent agree. Like mm. looking at those games during December, January, the Bournemouth, the Luton, the Forest, a bit of qual- a bit more quality off the bench. Mm. Like those, they had better quality on their benches than we had mm. at, at, at a lot of times. You know, like we were we were having to bring on Matt Ritchie and Dummett and. You know, no, nothing against them, but they're just not the attacking threat. Yeah. You need them to be right. Yeah. So I, I fully agree with that. We're 10 points off Spurs now, who are mm. kind of pretty close to Villa as well. So I think mm. that's a very valid, valid argument to make. And as we said, Spurs just came up and played us with one player missing, like one first-choice player missing. 
We just named out a full 11. <laughs> <laughs> Again, and it's not the first time yeah. we've done that. Anyway, props to Eddie Howe for getting it right tactically. Props to the team, the lads coming in, knowing that they're not necessarily first choice, knowing that they've got slated in the media in the past to go and execute a specific tactic a strategy and ultimately batter, batter <sighs> Spurs off the field. Beautiful. It was very, very satisfying indeed. Mm. And yeah, six games left. We're currently sixth in the table. Man United got very, very lucky, and their referee was very on their side. And we don't even—we're not even going to go into that. No. Um, but this—this this is the momentum now. If we could pick mm. up what five win, four or five wins in the last six games, draws here, anything could happen. Uh, yeah. In particular, six would be a magnificent result. Mm. But you know, you just never know. I will leave it at that. Mm. <laughs> Bosh, indeed. Radio, Alan, it's now you and me time to have some fun. We've talked this. about this a lot. As, I've, as we mentioned at the top of the show, folks, Alan and I are very much football manager enthusiasts. As you can see over my shoulder mm. here, I've got all the old FM games lined up here. And I sit in this exact spot in my living room slash kitchen playing a lot of football manager. And uh, we kind of thought, we've, we've talked a lot about it, um, both myself and Alan. We have years of experience, mm. but not, not, necess- not necessarily good or positive or skilled experience at Football Manager. Um, but we love the game we know in Inside mm. Out. And we thought to ourselves, what will life look like five years down the line as Newcastle fans and for the club? And what better way to do that than using Football Manager? So for those of you that don't know, Football Manager is a football management simulation game. Um, different to the your FIFAs or your EAs or all that, you're not actually like playing and controlling the players. You're managing a team, selecting the training, the tactics, the strategy, transfers, recruitment, all that kind of stuff. So you're actually the manager of the club. And it's incredibly realistic. The data and detail in this game, you're talking thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of players of code. You know, it's it it gets jokingly described as a, you know, a, a spreadsheet on mm. on crack um, in terms of like how it works in the back end. But uh, I've, I know this game inside out and it's as close or as realistic as you'll ever get in terms of a simulation. Oh, yeah. And that's exactly what we did. We actually clicked the button and we said, right, run the simulation. Basically, in game, you go on holiday as a manager mm. and you let the game play itself out. So we ran five seasons in the football manager engine to see how Newcastle would fare out. And as I mentioned, we've not looked too closely at it. We had a quick glimpse for about two minutes before we hit the big red record button. But the results, Alan, shall we say, were interesting. We're going to bring a few things up on the screen as I speak. And starting off by taking a look at basically what would be next season for us. So we're going to skip this season, obviously, as we know. And we're going to take a look at next season. And the first place we're going to start would be transfers. So what we're looking at is the summer, you know, next summer, as we as we speak, you and I in real life, we're looking at the summer transfer window. What did Newcastle do in mm. the simulation in Football Manager? There's a few names that pop out here, Alan, for mm. us. Um, we seem to have raided Portugal quite heavily. We did indeed. Uh, as you see. <laughs> the first thing you said to me was, Nicholas Otamendi, mm. what? <laughs> yeah. Um, we seem to have targeted Portugal. We brought in Nicolas Antimendi, as I said, from Benfica as a centre half. It looks like then we went over to Sporting and raided them for Pedro Gonçalves, who's a cracking uh, attacking midfielder. Really, really good player. Has really good numbers and stats out in Portugal at the moment. And then another player who Man Red have been pursuing apparently in real life. We know they're desperate for a number six. They've mm-hmm. not solved it with Casemiro. I had to laugh, Casemiro being described as a soccer age player which yeah, right belter. At the yeah belter so the, it looks like we've also gone and signed martin hulmond who is a basically a danish um, kind of a defensive midfielder so that's mm. um a number six added to the ranks alongside yet another from portugal and benfica florentino luis who is also a defensive midfielder so in game eddie howe and newcastle have spent 240 million in the window Mm. Uh, this is in euros, by the way, because I've said it to be in euros. Um, so what, what are we looking at? Maybe 180 million pounds, 190 million there, pounds. There about, yeah. uh, I, w- I wouldn't be able. And another interesting one, lastly, to call out, Alan, would be somehow they managed to loan in Julian Alvarez from Manchester City. What a move. Interesting one. What a move. Love that. And I suspect if we were to go into the deal, there may be a, an option in there, but we'll, yeah. come, to, we'll come back to that. <laughs> Meanwhile, in player sales... 
uh, as we'll see on the screen. Miggy Almiron moved to Aston Villa for 10.25 million. Interesting. Jamal oh. Lewis finally a permanent move to Everton. <laughs> Matt Target moving to Roma. What a uh, move. Which is not a bad place to go. What a move. Uh, Ryan Fraser gone to Norwich. And then two other ones that stood out to us. Harvey oh. Barnes going alone to Everton. So maybe things not materializing the way he would have wanted um, in this save. And Jacob Murphy going to Burnley. Alan, I don't know if you know because we barely got to look. With those, knowing those transfers, where do you think Newcastle finish next season with those additions to the squad? Well, I think they're very good additions to the squad and we haven't lost any of the big boys. So I would argue that the squad would have gotten much stronger. I would have said Let's go have a look. Sixth. Yeah. So it's the 24-25 season. I have it on screen now. Ninth. Ninth in the league. Ooh, it looks bad. like things did not go as well as we might have thought. No. 38 games played, only 16 of those won. Eight games drawn and 14 defeats. Mm. Something went very wrong here, Alan. And the, the, the one thing we should probably check is, did Eddie Howe? Yeah, so, right. last. <laughs> so we can go into the manager movements for the season. So straight away what we can see is that actually what emerges is that Eddie Howe was sacked at the end of last season. The season we're in now, right now in real life, was replaced by Jose Mourinho. <laughs> no, 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 no. No. Jose Mourinho came in in July of 2024. So Jose Mourinho comes in in the summer. Things obviously didn't start very well, Alan, because... Mm. Four on the months 2nd later. of November, <laughs> he was sacked again and replaced. Very interesting narrative by Unai Emery. Yeah. Wow. Unai Emery, who obviously was first choice, I think, yeah. before Eddie Howe for the boys. Okay, I wasn't really expecting this to not go as well as we, we, we yeah. were coming in thinking we're Champions League all the way here. So, one year in, Eddie Howe sacked. Marino's come in, he's sacked, Unai Emery's in charge and we finish ninth. No Europe. Yeah. It can only get better start. from here, Alan. Right? True. <laughs> okay. Following season. Uh, we'll go back into... Tra- no, let's go back out into Newcastle transfers, shall we? The following season. I will speed things up. Julian Alvarez. Looks like Great that sign. option was activated. 63 million euros from Manchester City. Great signing indeed. Mm. Signed a guy called Victor Gomez from Braga, who I'm not too familiar with. 29-year-old right back. So clearly right back was an area maybe Trippier's kicking on. I don't know what's happening in Livermento yeah. in here. Uh, that Florentino Lloris deal was made permanent. Uh, Hakim Zayek, randomly, on a free yeah. transfer from Galatasaray. And then and another aging centre-back. <laughs> Alongside Otamendi. Can you pronounce his name? Because I'll, I'll Sebastian Coates. Did, didn't Coates. he play for Sunderland? He did play for Sunderland and also Liverpool, I believe. Yeah, yeah Liverpool. He had two, maybe one and a half, two seasons at Sunderland and yeah. somehow ended up at Newcastle. We can see since he's moved on to Saudi. Hundred and twenty five million euros spent over on the outgoing transfers. So again, this is the summer of 2025 we'll be looking at. Joe Willock, Aston Villa for 33 million. Harvey Barnes making that loan move permanent to Everton. Carius back home to Germany to Wolfsburg for 9 million. Elliot Anderson, Wolves 5.75 and Jacob Murphy also gone. Do you want to call out some interesting things here in the free yeah. transfer section? So the, the lads seem to have all shipped themselves off to Saudi Arabia or... I think Al Riyadh, are they Qatar? Are they? You might, so, you, you might be right, yeah. No, it says Saudi, actually. Oh, Saudi, actually, yeah. Um, so might Dan Byrne, Fabian Scher, and Sean Langstaff have all decided that they want to go off to sunnier climates of Saudi Arabia, definitely getting hundreds of millions a week, which I don't blame them, to be fair. And I also just see there that Alex Murphy has left to go to Barrow. That's not good enough. He should be playing for that's Real Madrid enough, minimum. No. Yeah. That's a disgrace. Football yep. manager has let us down big time there on Alex Murphy. Kyle Erfernan going alone to crew as well. <laughs> okay, Alan, knowing what you now know after two seasons of football manager simulation, two years down the line from where we are now, how do you think we fared up in the Premier League? I don't think that that squad's gotten better from what we were. 
But mm-hmm. is Unai Emery going to be the man to get us a little? I'm going to say seventh. Seventh. I'd, yeah, I, I would have said, you know, we've lost a couple of players, but maybe it's like time to gel and all that kind mm. of stuff. Yeah, I probably would have said maybe fifth or sixth. We don't know. I, I genuinely don't know. So this is the 25-26 table. We're both wrong. Yeah. Newcastle United have finished eighth in the league. Um, fairly similar performance, I would say, to the mm. season before, this time going one better and getting Europa League football, which is interesting. Dare we check if Una Emery managed to survive yeah. that season? Okay, here we we'll go. We'll have to. I'm looking here. Has he got... Sorry, I'm still in the, old, the previous season. It looks good for Una Emery. No, it no, doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> sacked unconfirmed. He was sacked, he was sacked the, at the end of the season by the looks yeah. of things in May 26. Wow, okay. And probably didn't get replaced too soon. So we would need to probably jump ahead quickly to see... Who he was replaced by, mm-hmm. and he was replaced by Thomas Tuchel. Okay, so mm. we've gone Jose Marino, Unai Emery, and Thomas Tuchel. I don't like this at all, Alan. We're two seasons in. <laughs> <laughs> we're two seasons in, and we're on our third manager. Okay, <laughs> I wasn't expecting this at all. Now wow. we go back again, yeah, and we look at the transfer window under Thomas Tuchel after a ninth and an eighth place finish. Mm. We spent 276 million, Alan, in the summer that followed. Any names jump out to you there? A couple of them do. So, and Andre Lunin, the goalkeeper from Real Madrid, Mohamed Simakan, the centre half from Leipzig. There's some tasty looking players. And then we have that Joe Felix. I, I don't rate him in real life, but in football manager, he is quality. I don't rate him in real life, but quality, mm. quality player. Signed from Tottenham for 87 million euros, rising to 114. I mean, he is unbelievable in football manager. Mm. It's an interesting, uh, obviously, the move away from Eddie Howe means maybe we're deploying a 10 by the looks of things. Mm. Um, and we'll have a look at the tactic as of the current season once we once we catch up uh, mm. towards the end of the five years. Simican is one that we've talked about in the, it's been talked about uh, in the WhatsApp group. I think mm. Sean Casey has definitely referred to his name before. I've seen him mentioned on Twitter. Would love to see him come into Newcastle. Yes. He's an unbelievable defender. Super young, rapid quick. Love yeah. it. And uh, this is Savio. Is this the guy that was doing very well at Girona? Was yes. it, yeah, he's got the city, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he's at city in real life. 100%. You're right. Okay. Out, in terms of outgoings, really quickly, we saw not too much. Uh, Sebastian Coates went uh, to Al Ittihad. So that kind of makes sense, I guess. Alfie mm. Harrison has left the club. That Man City youngster that we signed. Yes. Florentino Lloris gone. Any other stalwarts? No, I would say Alex, no. Nothing. Alex jump, Murphy got to Reading again. Alex Murphy's on loan to Reading. So we'll keep an eye on Alex Murphy throughout mm. these five seasons. Okay, call it, Alan. So we've had ninth and eighth. Our thing is getting better under Thomas Tuchel in this. Better. Scenario. Sixth. Better. I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to go six. Mm. Surely we have to climb the league at this point. <laughs> so it's the 26-27 season. Sixth. We, we got right, one finally. Right, finally. <laughs> we, may, we may like to be higher uh, three years time uh, in real life, three and a yeah. half years time. But in terms of finishing sixth, yes, 38 games played, 18 won, 12 loss though. And we finished six points behind Manchester, which is not fun. How did we get Champions League finishing in sixth place? That is a good question. And that <laughs> probably takes us over to another section. Oh, the, yeah, that new I format. I think it's either the format or maybe, just maybe, we did spot that we had obtained Europa League football. Did we win the Europa did League? And is the question. Did we? Let's go take a look. In the UEFA Europa League... We won something. Just looking at it here. It looks like we won the Europa League in the year 2027, which has got us Champions League football. We've won a trophy. Yes. Ah, now it doesn't matter anymore. We won something. That's all I care about. (laughs) So the man to to return silverware to St. James's Park for the first time in stupid amount of years, obviously, considering we're in a simulation, was Thomas Tuchel. And I did not see that coming. No. Wow. Now, spoiler alert, it looks like we've won the Europa League twice in this simulation because we've also yes. just won it in the year 2029, which is the year 
that the simulation ends. But we'll come back to that. <laughs> so ninth, eighth, sixth. We have upward progression. Mm. Yes. Yes. Let's see how do we build on that. We're nearly there now. We're coming towards mm. the end. We spent another 170 million after we won that Europa League with Champions League football on the horizon. The names may not be as familiar right now. Yeah. Here. Now, I can see a name here on the top of this list signing for 53 million from Napoli, and it's Nathan, who is a yes. Brazilian centre half. Brazilian, yes. And he's the man that in real life Napoli replaced Kim Min Jae with after he moved to Bayern. Pretty good, solid defender, I would say. Probably what we what might need going into the Champions mm -hmm. League. Um, the other names are not as familiar to me. There's a guy here called Noah Atubolo. He's a goalkeeper. So maybe Lunin wasn't cutting the cheese. No, as good as he was, yeah. Yeah, and he looks pretty good on paper there uh, mm -hmm. in the game. Batista Mendy is uh, coming, a player coming from Juventus. I don't recognize him at all. That's a slightly more random one. And then I do know this fella, Sebastian Szymanski, who's a Polish midfielder. I actually do rate him quite well, and I know mm. him from Football Manager. And we did we have signed him from Liverpool in game. So decent addition for Champions League level. And then on the outgoing side, we sold Julian Alvarez to Real Madrid. Only a small profit, no? Mm. Profit's a profit, isn't it? <laughs> profit's a profit. Here's one for you. Lewis Miley. No, not good enough. Doesn't like that at all, guys. No. Lewis Miley moving to Fulham for 14.5 million in the year 2028. Florentino Lloris also left alongside him. Mm. Yakuba Minta still at Newcastle. They're gone on loan to Southampton. We've obviously not looked at how any of the players have performed in this, but we are no. going to actually do a reflective look back over the last few seasons for a few names at Alan's, at Alan's discretion. Um, in terms of names, Harrison Ashby, I see Kual on loan. It looks mm. like Garang Kual is just eternally on loan yeah. for the rest of his career which is not necessarily what we want to see. No. So we finished sixth going in. We won the Europa League. We're going into Champions mm. League football in the year 2028. I think yes. it was. I don't know if we've Eight. strengthened the team that much based on no, what no. we can see there, have you? I'm going to say we're going to go to seventh. We're going to drop a spot but stay in Europe. Dropping to seventh and staying in Europe. Okay. Mm. Now Alan does know that we won the Europa League the season after, so he may mm. he may have uh, mm. he may have a little look down the the magnifying glass there. Looking at league matters, looks like if I've not messed this up, we finished sixth again for a second mm. season in a row. Interestingly, we didn't talk about who's been winning the leagues, but looks like City dominated until this season. Yeah. We finished sixth, and Arsenal actually finally won the league, a point ahead of Man City. And as you can see, we qualified for the Europa League by finishing yeah. in sixth, which is interesting. Okay, so we've gone ninth, eighth, sixth, sixth. I'm going to pause okay, here before well. we move on to the, the final season, Alan, in, the, in this simulation. Mm. Would you be happy with this? Where we are Many. now, as you and I are sitting here in April 2024, to go ninth, eighth, sixth, sixth. We won the Europa League and got Champions League football because of it, but still haven't finished in the top four. I want to win something. I don't care where we finish. I want to win something. <laughs> so, yes, I would absolutely snap the hand off you for this. I want to see Newcastle lift the trophy. That's all I care about. And Europa League is the one. And if we reflect that onto real life matters, obviously, in the next six games, Alan, if we were to secure Europa League football, you know, looking Massive. at the teams that are in it now, obviously, Leverkusen are flying it in that mm. competition now, but that's, some, that's a competition we could go and win. Um, Absolutely. Having taken what we've learned on the travels on the road in the Champions League, you'd like to think that maybe, just maybe, we could win that. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's finish off the simulation. The following season, we spent 106 million mm -hmm. on what looks to be just three players. We signed a player called Amadou Dombouya, a centre back, a French centre back. Uh, who do we say that was from? From Nice for nice. 52 million. Now, if anyone knows Football Manager, we've got his profile on screen. He looks quite good, to be mm. fair to him. He's only 21. Um, so we've bought a lot of defenders throughout the duration of this save. And added to that is a young player who I'm quite familiar with from a Football Manager perspective as well, is Tigo Land. He is mm. Dutch. Uh, looks like we signed him from PSV. And uh, another kind of a DM or a centre midfielder as mm. well. Um, quite, a, quite a large price there. Other than that, a player from Boca Juniors, but it's only 106 million now spent considering we have 
Europa League football ahead. I don't think we won the Champions League um, by I any stretch so. of the imagination. We can take a quick look. So in the Champions League, uh, let me just make sure I have the right fixtures up. It's not that one. It's this one. We got to the knockoff, knockout playoff round. So we escaped the group by the looks of things, the new league format. Mm. So we played against the likes of Atletico Madrid. We lost to them, beat Wolfsburg. We beat Celtic. Uh, we drew with Dortmund, beat Sevilla, drew with Club Brugge. Got ourselves into, sorry, there was a game against Porto that we drew and we lost to Real Madrid in the Bernabeu. Ooh, a trip to the Bernabeu would be nice. Wouldn't mind that. <laughs> and then it looks like we went out of the knockout playoff <sighs> at the hands poor, of poor Chelsea. Poor second leg. Hmm. That is not ideal at all. No. Okay. We didn't, we just, do we still yeah, think Thomas Tuchel is the manager? Yeah. I have a funny feeling he's not after that Champions League exit. Doesn't look like it, Adam. It looks like he's mm. he's held his job for those couple of seasons. As we look at the manager movements, there's no sign of Tommy Tuchel's name in there at all. Some interesting ones there. Ten Hag didn't get sacked until 2028, <laughs> which is uh, yeah, maybe maybe people might be looking at this going, "I'm never yeah. playing football manager because yeah, that is, is not realistic." <laughs> but oh, uh, that's what we're here for. Okay, finally. I think we had one more season to look at, if okay. I if I'm correct. Sorry, we didn't look at any of the outgoings for that particular season. This was the last season we're going to check, by the way. Anthony, uh, Gordon. Anthony Gordon moving to Tottenham for only twenty three and a half million, rising to mm. thirty nine. A heartbreaking one here, Alan. Yeah, big Joe going out in a free to Villarreal. <laughs> to be Not fair, he'd be all. he'd be quite old there, so we we let him away with it. True. We let him away to go and enjoy his time in Spain. Yeah. Um, final season then of this simulation. Prediction. Fifth. I'm going to go fourth. We still have Bruno, by the way. We still have Isaac. Yeah. We've not seen them on this old list. So Bruno's still there. Isaac should be still there. Botman should be still there. I'm going to chance fourth. And the answer is drum roll. Fifth, Alan gets it right. Genius. Man City back on top of the league again. Mm. Newcastle finishing fifth, but Alan qualifying for the Champions League Champions again. Champions League. And we know that because we had a little peek ahead, didn't we? Uh, by we accident, did. inadvertently, knowing that we won the Europa League in 2029. So we won it again. Mm. And if we look at the most recent one, <laughs> Yes. What a way to cap the yes. simulation. That, I, that's the best way to end this ever. <laughs> the best possible outcome in the year 2029, folks. We won the Europa League for the second time and we beat Manchester United in the final in Lisbon, two yes. goals to one. And I can tell you, on the score sheet, we had Savio and Alexander Isaac. Oh, look at them stats. Holy moly. 0.19 in XG and we won 2 1. You'd love to see it. <laughs> love, love it. to see it. Joshua Zerxi was in there as well. What a player. And looking at the history of the Europa League, we won it in 26-27 against Braga. Braga. Interesting. Hmm, nice so I think, as we said, that was a good way to close it out. Yes, Beating Man United in the Europa League and finishing, what did we say again? Fifth. So we fifth. went ninth, eighth, sixth, sixth, fifth. Two Europa League trophies, one and Champions League campaign and another to follow. Oh, and an FA Cup. We and just an throw FA that Cup. in there. Yes. That's pretty right. decent. Yeah. That's, uh, I mean, some people might be more ambitious than that. Uh, I could I could probably deal with it. Uh, European football every year. For me, um, we're going to win the one. FA Cup and two Europa Leagues in the next five years. I'd take that. I'd be quite happy with that. Session on, folks. Yes. Indeed. <laughs> Love it. And as we said, Bruno's still there, Isaac's still there, and Botman's still there. Absolutely. That. That, as they say, wouldn't be half bad at all. <laughs> right, Alan. That was fun. A little, it was. A little fictional that. trip ahead in time. Um, gave us an excuse to just open Football Manager because, to be fair, if we opened it while Krisha was here, he wouldn't know uh, what's going on. Yeah, he wouldn't no. know what it is. And it would just scare him and we'd have to send yeah. him back to Morocco again. Absolutely. Right. I think we're just about coming towards the end of the show, Alan. There was a couple of things we wanted to have a quick chat about. Yeah. We have a few newsworthy items that we might actually hold until next week. Mm-hmm. And what we'll do is we'll get, we'll get Chris to put the feelers out there and see if he's got any uh, 
any contacts out there in the yeah. world that can talk to us about some of the newsworthy items. There's a few transfer rumours, talks about sporting directors, and we might have a little chat about um, Newcastle's post-season plans. I don't want to yeah. say pre-season, it's post-season plans yeah. in the summer. So we'll revisit that again next week. But in the topic of next week, we have a big newsworthy item because, as yes. we mentioned, we're going to be doing a live Irish Mags show from Irish Mags HQ in the Bleecker Street Bar in Dublin the evening of Wednesday the 24th of April prior to the Crystal Palace game. From roughly around 6 o'clock onwards, so if anybody wants That's to land it. in there at 3, 4, 5, mm-hmm. no bother at all. That's I'll it. be up for the day, so I'll be there. I'll be knocking about the place. And as we mentioned, we would love to get some of our Irish Mags, uh, some of the locals and hang around the Bleecker, anyone who fancies travelling up, probably mm-hmm. a good excuse to, to make a journey to jump yes. on a train or a bus or in the car um, Absolutely. and do reach out to myself or Alan if you if you are planning to travel up if you haven't traveled before we could maybe look at you know arrangements and travel and see who's going to stay where and all that kind of jazz and uh, I think we could have a bit of fun with a live pod Alan are you looking oh, forward I to think it? we will too oh, I can't wait I absolutely cannot wait for this it's going to be mayhem it's going to be great <laughs> uh, like are we allowed we're, we're allowed to be drunk on the pod. Tev never said we couldn't get drunk on the on the podcast. I, no. I never signed a contract to do this, did you? No. No. no so never signed anything want? at all. <laughs> no, no. Just like the Tenali deal, if Tev hasn't done his research and didn't do a background check on all of us, yeah, it's his own fault. He only has himself to blame. <laughs> well, on that note and on that bombshell, I think that's a good time to bring episode 20 whoop whoop to a close for this week once again a huge thank you thank you alan for joining me obviously thank you very much uh, for our little trip down to the future through what we call it back to the future through football yeah, manager back to the future <laughs> and uh, of course discussing the excellent result of the weekend oh, yes hopefully more to come six games left hopefully europa league football at the very yeah. least we would that would be a dream after everything we've yes. been through so for now we will call an end to the show. We shall obviously see you all next week. Those of you who are going to mm-hmm. turn out for the live event. Thank you to everyone who's listened. As usual, hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Drop us a like on the video. Leave a comment uh, below what you think of our future plans uh, within the football manager world, future transfers. And of course, if you're going to make an appearance at the Bleaker, the more the merrier. And uh, likewise on Spotify or an Apple as well. Drop us a five-star rating. We love that. And the more five-star ratings we get while Krisha isn't here, the better. Mm. Because it just sends him a clear message. He needs to do better. <laughs> right. We'll be back for more Irish Magnus next week. So until then, we shall say, how are the lads? Slán, go fall, and see you Slán all very soon. <laughs> <laughs>